Toastmaster, Master, easy speakers, and guests. It was the end of the holiday season, and my dishwasher just stopped working. It wouldn't clean anything. This was coming out dirty, or either it was flooded. So I had a variety of choices there. So I had to figure out what do I do? Do I repurchase another one, or do I repair one? So I thought to myself, let's look at the repair costs and the age of the machine versus purchasing a new one and I ultimately decided to purchase a new one. What I'm going to provide you today are tips that I use when I repurchase a dishwasher. The first thing I looked at was what are my must-haves? What's gonna make the dishwasher function for my household? The first thing that I looked at was the cleaning rating. How do you clean, how is the dishes being cleaned? Do you have to soak the dishes prior to? Do you have to scrape the plates off? Or can you just throw them in there and let, and let everything work on its own? And how is the drying element on the machine? Because sometimes with glasses, if they're not drying correctly, it will leave water spots on the glasses. And I know me, I'll probably wash them again, so that's a waste of time. And what are the cycle options? Can you do like a light soil option, whereas the dishes are not really dirty, or a pots and pan option, whereas if it's cooking pots and pans, they traditionally get dirty. And do you have time delay functionality on it? Can you wash it two hours from now? Can you do it overnight? Can you do it six hours? What are my options there? And also I looked at the size of what my area was at the time to see how much space I had to work with. If I look at the cabinetry around and see if there are any adjustments needed to be made, then I could maybe make some adjustments or to move the machine up or down. And I also considered the product warranty on the machine that I was purchasing. Because some come with built-in warranties and depends on how long the warranty is, what's covered, what's not covered, some may cover the machinery and some may cover the motor, and I was looking for a motor in its entirety. Once I did my must-have list, my next thing was, okay, how do I complete my, complete my research? Do I do online or do I do in-store? So I opted to do both to narrow down my research. I searched, I did a complete Google search, said, okay, what are the top rated dishwashers for the, uh, for the last year? And that came, gave me back a lot of results, meaning that I needed to narrow the search. So what I did was I didn't want to only look at, for example, General Electric or Whirlpool or Maytag or Sears. So I said I want to compare all those against one another. So I looked for a consumer research website that would give me the user reviews on how it actually worked in comparison to what the, or what, what the manufacturer said. One of them said top dishwasher would dry your dishes in no time flat. One of them said, oh, you know, you'll never hear this one as long as you sleep. They can say anything, but it doesn't actually work. So that was my concern. And once I reviewed that, I stumbled upon Consumer Reports and CNET. Both of those were user reviews where they had actually got the machine and they tested it. So they, it would let me know, okay, they tested a Maytag versus a Bosch or a Whirlpool. So I can see which one is going to work better for me. And I want to see which one is going to hold up to the product reviews that they exerted within on the, on the manufacturer. And I also found that they had a couple different new functionalities on there. Apparently, noise level has come way down. Because <laughs> I was used to hearing it, you, when you turn it on downstairs, you can hear it upstairs, oh, okay, the dishwasher is gone. And apparently, that's a new functionality that's going on now. So once I narrow down the dishwashers, I narrow down the must-haves, and I narrow down two options. And then I review, okay, where am I going to buy these machines at? Because there's so many different options. And that's when I went to the in-store experience. My story experience was basically trying to figure out what was going to be the best customer experience for me. Because when I purchase large appliances, my thing is I want to make sure that A, is what it says it is, and B, if something else is going to happen to the machine after I purchase it, who do I talk to? How do I follow up with it? Because sometimes you can get a cheaper machine online, but if you have no follow-up, you're stuck with a machine and nothing to do with it. And I also wanted to figure out what were my install options. Can they install it? Can they take call it away? Is there a charge for this? What are my return options of the machine? And talk to the um, salespeople at the store and say, okay, of the two machines that I've chosen, how often are they returned to you? That will let me know if the user reviews that I saw on the website were kind of comparison to what they said they were. And luckily they were pretty good. Well, what are the install procedures for the install? Is there a fee for that? Is it free? And are there any additional warranties that they offer within the store? Well, that's where the rubber met the road. <laughs> the uh, the in-store experience varied greatly. You had one store that offered promotional discounts, 
They hauled away the machine. They installed it for free. They had an additional one-year warranty on the machine on top of the manufacturer's warranty. And they have a complete outline of the process when they will call you as far as like when the machine came in, if it was damaged, if they had to replace it, when the installer will come and let you know what was going on with it, how long it was going to take for them to install it, and also the cherry on top, 0% financing. Meaning that if I didn't want to pay for the machine in totality right then and there, I had time and I did not pay interest. I said, okay, let's go to store number two. Store number two offered all of that, but it was a la carte. You paid for the you paid for the install, you paid for the hallway, you paid for them to uh, you paid for them for the additional warranty. And also they didn't have an outline of the process, so I didn't know where was I in the steps. And I'm like, if I'm going to spend this much money on a machine, I need to know exactly what's going on. And consequently, they were also very similar price. So there was no big price difference. It was just the main thing to me that made them stand out was customer experience. So of course, I purchased the one with a better customer experience. <laughs> My delivery went smoothly. They called me when the machine got there. They called me when they was getting ready to install. And the install went relatively quickly and easily. The uh, installer even gave me tips on how to make sure the machine was uh, maintained. And it worked fine. And one thing I do want you to know, machines are very quiet now. You can't hear anything. And that's what really surprised me because I had to, I, when I turned it on, I said, okay, is this thing on or not? <laughs> <laughs> and I opened it a couple of times. So in conclusion, when buying a dishwasher, my tips are determine what your must-haves are for your lifestyle. Because everyone is different. I have a two-story house, so therefore the noise level wasn't that important to me, but it was a welcome surprise. Mine was my usage and the features, and also what warranty is going to work best for you. If it's an extended warranty or a built-in warranty, it can, it can come with the store or not. And do your research online to narrow down your options, because before when you buy, when you buy appliances, it can take you all day. This took me less than a week to figure out what I wanted to do. And my biggest tip is, what is your in-store purchase, in-store experience? Because I found that to be the, pretty much the breaking point for the two options, because like I said, the machines were equally priced. And enjoy your purchase. Mm -hmm. Margaret, great speech. Tip on purchasing a dishwasher. I connect well with your speech. My wife cooks, and I have to do the dishes. <laughs> with something I don't like to do manually. So thank you for those great tips. Well, from time to time, I feel that something blocks your connection with the audience. And I think I knew what that was. This one, the left one. Yeah. You can knock it over, or you can just move it to the side. You don't need this one. There. Without the left hand, you are all open. The audience can see you clearly. So when you speak, we can hear you. And when you do some hand movement, we can see that. And just remember that the audience, the Toastmaster program, always want you to succeed. So we are one family group of audience, so just know that. You have a good voice, loud and clear, but you can make your voice great. If you slow down, if you lay down the tips from my point, and if you use vocal variety to emphasize on the point that is more important, and for that just a mm, good little less important, you can just by quickly, but from time to time you, I think you kind of went too fast because you are trying to control your nervousness. But just remember that even if you feel nervous inside, nobody knows. You were so confident with your speech. You have a great speech. And you, and you knew your speech so well. So now, I think the time is right for you to just tee up your note and be the great speaker that has always been inside you. Ma'am, generally, hallelujah.